Good morning everyone, welcome to my vlog. Today I'll share with you guys how a day in my life looks like. For those who don't know me, I'm a medical doctor from Colombia and I'm currently doing an infectious disease rotation in a Miami hospital. In today's vlog, I'll share with you guys everything I do during a typical day, with a special emphasis on how I manage my time, the tools I use, and also how my experience rotating in a hospital has been like so far. So the first thing you need to know is that I'm currently staying in an awesome building located in Brickell. Brickell is one of the top neighborhoods in Miami and it's an awesome place to stay. It's very fancy, it's right next to the beach, and in my particular case, staying here is very practical since I live in just next to the metro rail, which means that my commute to the hospital takes only about 10 minutes. And so the first thing I do to start my day is to wake up early. I currently need to get to the hospital at around 8 a.m. and so I try to wake up at around 5.45 in order to have a good hour or so to hit the gym. As you may know, this is really important for me. It keeps me sane and I just find it like a nice way to start the day with the right food. After pumping some iron, I go upstairs and start to make breakfast. As you can see, I try to use the time while making breakfast and eating to study for the USMLE Step 3, the last of a series of medical exams I need to present to enter into residency. After doing this, I take my bag, I put on my AirPods, and I start listening to the Fairbrow podcast. For those who know, it's an infectious disease podcast created by an ID fellow, and it has quickly become my go-to medical podcast to study for my rotation. I then arrive to the hospital, I say hello to the team, and I ask the ID fellow which patients I'll be following today. One of the things I love about medicine here is that you can access the patient charts straight from your laptop. Back in Colombia, I had to run all around the hospital searching for an available computer, so this has been a nice change of pace. Depending on the day, I usually take care of one to three patients. To do this, I like to start by seeing their charts, labs, and everything. I then annotate the highlights in my iPad, and then I go to see them personally to ask for their questions. By around 10 a.m., I have usually finished reviewing the charts and pre-rounding with the fellows, and so I take out my iPad and I try to be productive in the spare time I have, with the key word being, I try. By 11 a.m., we usually go to the cafeteria and grab some lunch, which, yes, is actually really good, and yes, having lunch at 11 a.m. is totally normal over here. We then go upstairs, we eat, we chat, and then we just wait for about an hour or so for the attending to arrive. When he finally arrives, we start presenting the patients, discussing the cases, and proposing the next steps in treatment. The attending usually asks a lot of questions, and to be honest, this is the highlight of my day. This probably sounds weird, but I love being asked questions. I love puzzles, I love tough challenges, and honestly, the more the attending asks these questions, the more I enjoy the rounds. After doing this, and depending on which fellow is on call, we can take about 30 minutes to discuss a relevant topic. And yes, I also love this part of the day. Now, overall, I have really liked this rotation. My schedule is very fair, I have felt like an active member of the team, everyone has been extremely polite and patient, most, if not all, of the attendings and residents have been eager to teach us, and I've been able to use my native language with some Spanish-speaking patients, which has been awesome. And academically speaking, things actually couldn't be better. In fact, here have some of my evaluations. And yeah, it has felt really good to receive some nice comments like Santiago was very impressive during his ID rotation, or Santiago is one of the top five observers I've had during the many years I've been teaching. However, and to be totally honest, I'm actually having second thoughts about this whole residency thing. Because although my experience as an observer has been pristine, I have also had the opportunity to observe and chat with the residents, fellows, and attendings. And I think that for the first time ever, I've actually tried to put myself in their shoes. I've actually tried to imagine how my life would be if I continued down this path. And I don't know, for the first time in my life, I'm actually not convinced that this is for me. I mean, I love medicine, you know that. I love doing rounds, I love talking to patients and teaching medicine and learning medicine and the whole deal. But I just don't see myself spending 80 hours a week in a hospital for the next five to seven years of my life. I don't know, maybe it's just me or maybe I'm just too spoiled from the last year I've had like being my own boss and everything. But yeah, for the first time ever, I'm actually having second thoughts and I need to do some serious thinking on my part because this can totally change everything. I'll make sure to keep you guys posted on my thoughts and decisions, but that's probably a topic for another video. But anyways, as I was saying, I typically leave the hospital between 3 and 5 p.m. and I take advantage of the commute time to call my family and chat with them. Then, once I get home, I proceed to tackle my huge to-do list as any reasonable adult would, by taking a nap. Yeah, really. 
I mean, I know it sounds counterproductive, but you see, I know myself. I know perfectly well that whenever I come home from work, I'm pretty much useless. I mean, yes, I could technically grind it out and force myself to work, but in my experience, that's just a recipe for procrastination and unfocused work. And so instead, I accept that I'm human, that my adenosine builds up during the day, that I get tired and that I get unfocused, and that chances are that by taking a 30 minute nap, I'll be just as tired, but at least I'll be able to focus. Now, after waking up, I start working with what I hate the most, which is, of course, preparing for the OET. I spend about half an hour on this, and then I move on to study for my rotation. In this case, I'm trying to retrieve the information I've learned during the past few days about the most important fungal infections. To avoid skipping over important details, I make sure to write everything I'm trying to remember using what I like to call the modified Feynman technique. In this case, I'm writing everything using an application called Idromax. If you want to learn more, stick around till the end of the video to see all of the nice features this app has to offer. After studying a bit for my rotation, and around 9pm, I start to work on my personal projects. Depending on the day, this might be by editing videos, by working on my online courses, it really depends. But yeah, I've found that finishing the days with what I enjoy the most is the easiest way to make sure I'm productive late at night. Then I go to bed, and that basically completes my day. Now, as I was saying just a few seconds ago, I used an application called Idromax to make the diagram I told you about the fungal infections. And as you can see, I was able to include a ton of information in the graph, from the general classification of the fungi, to how they look, what are the most important species, their susceptibilities, how they are treated, what are their geographical locations, everything. And I even included some visual cues in the diagram that helped me remember the information better. For instance, this island with the couple of very white guys makes me remember about Candida tropicalis, albicans, and duplinensis, the most important fluconazole susceptible Candida species. But anyways, the creators of this app reached out to me a couple of weeks ago and told me to try the app and share it with you guys if I found it useful. And you know what? I did. In fact, I think this app is the perfect mix between a note-taking app and a graphic creation tool in the sense that it allows you to capture a lot of information, but also to organize it in a way that looks aesthetic. Because you see, in note-taking applications such as OneNote, you can fit a lot of information, for sure, but your creations are not that aesthetic, and sharing those creations in the form of diagrams or graphs is next to impossible. On the other hand, you have applications such as Canva that, yes, are much more aesthetic and allow you to create graphs and diagrams, but unfortunately, they are very cumbersome to use. They take a lot of time, resizing them is just a pain in the neck, and they can't fit that much information. So that's where Edromax comes in. Here you can fit as much information as you want without losing the aesthetics, and also without feeling that you're fighting the program. As an example, let's say I'm making the graph about the fungal infections, and I realize I need to add one extra column for the mold infections. In Canva, this would be a nightmare, but in here it's literally just a matter of dragging something laterally, and that's it. And it's the same thing for images, for icons, for text, you name it, it's all very easy and intuitive to use. And after you're done creating your chart, you can export it in several different formats, like PDFs, PNGs, vectors, like you name it. You can then use your creation for your presentations, your flashcards, whatever you want. But anyways, I want to emphasize that this is just the use case I have for Idromax. So in case you're curious, they do have tons of other diagrams and templates available to use, and finding them is just as easy as typing what you want to do. And so if that seems appealing to you, make sure to download Edramax for free using the link below. And that was everything for now. I really hope you found something useful. Let me know if you have any other questions. And I'll see you guys in the next one.